Cheers, VC. Hope we're doing well there. <clears throat> so forgive me if this is a quick one. Because I assume it's probably best. Uh, there's a good chance... There's a lot of Record Store Day videos, per usual, um, for people to watch. So who, nobody needs to see me go on forever when you're trying to move on to the next person's finds. Although that might be a little bit different under this year's circumstances. Uh, definitely a unique situation. Alright, so let's get after it. <clears throat> so this is a spin in the background. I'll just get out the uh, obligatory out the way. Uh, this is a uh, Memphis Swamp Jam. This is a pretty cool comp if you guys just watch my most recent video I'm trying to listen to some of the some of the collection I was given several hundred records and this is a uh, old blue thumb in exceptional condition so <clears throat> that's the spin in the background don't know if it's um, loud enough for you to hear it but I don't need to compete over it <clears throat> so here we go I'm gonna start off with the um, the record store day releases and then i'm going to go into ultimately which better than any of the releases this year uh kind of five fresh finds so to speak but uh this is an overload so this is just a uh record store day haul so i like to always make sure that when i go to record store day and support them and buy the record store day titles that i always buy uh, used in addition. That's where the record stores really make their money if you want to support a uh, small business. That's the way you do it. But uh, to get down to what we're really after, um, I always notice that on record store day, there's always titles that have been lingering about uh, that should have been repressed for some time. And for whatever reason, uh, record companies pussyfoot or litigations or royalties or finances, I don't know, gets in the way. But if you guys recall from the last record store day, I think this might have been a Black Friday record store day. Uh, my main objective was Fight. So this was the first album by the band that um, uh, Rob Halford formed after Judas Priest, after Painkiller, circa 92, 93-ish. I want to say Painkiller was 91. Uh, quick, quick little tidbit. There's two guitarists listed on here. I want to say Russ Parrish. I'll look that up to see if that's true. Was a guitarist that went on to be the lead guitar player for Steel Panther. The uh, 80s hair tribute band. But, um, so, long and short, this is the one that was from last record store day, so you had to assume what was coming next was coming next. And it did. My main objective for the last record store day uh, was the same main objective for this one. This is the second and final album for the band Fight. Uh, super pleased about this i have not yet listened to this one yet some people uh, kind of knocked on that uh war of war uh war of words uh saying that they for they were a little bit disappointed with the audio quality i didn't think it's terrible maybe it's just because i was so excited that that album finally came out but this one apparently uh it's supposed to sound better once again record store day titles or otherwise uh, these new records are getting so expensive i just don't understand for the life of me why any of them come in plain paper sleeves Put it in a poly sleeve or a uh, disc keeper or MoFi, whether it's a uh, MoFi brand or otherwise. Uh, all these companies should be able to have their own version of MoFi. But anyways, this is a uh, it, it's semi translucent, uh, transparent uh, red. If you can see, kind of has a, a smoke splatter throughout. Uh, so really pleased for that. Uh, that almost completely rounds out my uh, Rob Halford ish. Uh, collection. I still don't have uh, his Halford Resurrection and a couple other things on CD or vinyl. All right, so we're shifting from blues to uh, to heavy metal to rap. But if you know me, that's how I roll. I'm I'm a little bit eclectic, and I'm doing this all in the Grateful Dead shirt. Uh, I am a, a '80s baby, therefore a product of the '90s, and I remember distinctly. Uh, Riding as a teenager and just being a dumb idiot and uh, banging uh, subwoofers out the trunk and just riding around and cutting loose. So, uh, this Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, creeping on a come up, is something I was very familiar with. It's nostalgic for me. Uh, to some people, I might have to defend it, but for me, it's just a part of my youth and I love it. And I didn't even know what the color was going to be on this. This one here, if you tell by the hype sticker as well, says Limited Splatter. I broke the seal on this. There, I assume, this Ruthless Records. 
I don't know what an OG center label would look like, but this one is on clear, almost like a uh, shotgun blast of uh, like shotgun pellets, brain matter, and, and red. Who knows what that splatter is supposed to be? But intriguing and um, happy to have that. I'll resleeve these later to save you time. Also, anyone knows me knows I'm pro funk. And uh, I was loosely familiar with this. This is actually one of those things I'm grateful for Record Store Day. Besides the fact that a um, they'll get around, uh, you know, from resting on their laurels and uh, finally press Fight and the second album for Fight. Uh, there's also deeper dives that I'm not familiar with. And I know a lot of obscure funk and I bought a lot of it because it's got finally got re-released on Record Store Day or Black Flat Friday. Record Store Day. I was not familiar with this. So I did my due, my due diligence and I um, copped this because it was the only copy they had at Pharmacy Records here in town. And stoked about this. Not so much the um, translucent uh, blue wax, which uh, does look good. But uh, once again, this is kind of the point I make. Is it that hard to put it in a poly sleeve? That is my personal preference um, if you're spending that much money. But uh, Latin Funk... Outside of giving it a couple uh, listens uh, streaming and knowing I wanted to buy it, I figured I was going to deep dive in it once I have the vinyl, so I can't speak on it too much. But this is one of the uh, main ones that I wasn't thinking I cared about so much, but as Record Store Day got closer, um, that's what I grabbed. So, um, you'll see here I spent a pretty penny at uh, Pharmacy Records here in Greenville. A fantastic store. A massive turnover. You never, never know what you're going to find. Sometimes it's a bust because it's constant flips and being pillaged but i got lucky today because there's a couple gems i've been looking for this nectar i want to say this like their uh the first album was uh was it the center of the eye i think was their first album which also kind of has similar art to this uh almost eyeball looking cover right here but that was like 71 i want to say like this is their fourth album probably 74 ish but this is just prog it has a, a few um, moments where it gets a little bit spacey. There's times where, especially with the, you know, some people don't like prog vocals as a common complaint I hear. Uh, that might fall in that category. But I think uh, this is also cool, cause especially towards the back of the album, uh, this gets funky. I've been looking for Nectar for a while, and it's just been eluding me. And uh, that's a pretty clean copy. Uh, you know, it's got a punch on it and a little bit of ring wear for a uh, black album you can't be too mad at. And uh, not an everyday show uh, for a center label. And you can just see how tremendously clean that is. So uh, really happy about that pickup. And another one. This one has a notch instead of a punch. But this is not a, um, a glossy jacket. This is almost to be like a construction or paperboard jacket. So for this to be that white and ring wearless is really cool. Um, snowy, uh, psychedelic snow sent me some cactus a while ago. I was coming and I just, dude, I, for whatever reason in this region, I don't find cactus. And he was nice enough to, uh, send me some. And I think I found Son of Cactus, a promo copy after that. And so I've been on the hunt for this and it's eluded me for some time. And I stumbled into it and was happy, uh, to do so. And, uh, nothing that crazy. Just as far as clean cleanliness, it's a really nice... A uh, pristine copy, but that Atco is something everyone should be familiar with. So happy to find that. This is not going to be as out there or weird as um, some of this, you know, quasi psych cactus and this prog, you know, this kind of funky, spacey prog uh, or, you know, early 90s metal, you know, this, but this is more plain Jane, something everyone's familiar with. So a lot of people are going to just dismiss this as cheesecake, and maybe rightfully so, if it's not your cup of tea. Um, this flirts with disco without going full-blown disco. If anyone knows about Ohio players, um, Red Hot Chili Peppers covered them in the 90s. Uh, Love Roller Coaster from the Beavis and Butthead soundtrack. So if you don't know them, you might know that. But uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, Funko Knots, Sleepwalking, and uh, Jazz A Lady is the A-side, a really cool A-side. Uh, not enough, time slips away, shoot your shot, and dance if you want to, is the B-side. But what's really cool about this, this was a gap in my Ohio Players collection anyways, but if anyone knows about this band, this is consistently one of the most jacked up, beat up uh, artists, groups, acts, whatever you want to call it, in music history. This is party music, uh, party music, not only because it got the party jumping, so people would drop needle back in the day, 
but it's also like cheesecake. So this would have been out and about. People probably like, you know, rolled joints on this or maybe busted lines of cocaine or uh, spilled beer on it or whatever. So to find this clean is pretty cool because like this had to dodge generations now of teenagers because like just like the people now that are discovering music, you know, you're going to maybe buy with your eyes before you buy with your ears. You're going to, you know, buy what you're unfamiliar with by, you know, judging a book by its cover. So this is not a fresh find, but this is just an example of how nice that is. I've been looking for years to replace this and never have. Uh, I found this record multiple times. The wax is usually more beat up and the jacket is just as bad. Terrible sticker. Terrible sticker. Um, ring wear. If you see like beer stains... Like, dark beer stains and the inside guts are just absolutely jacked up. So, uh, that's what Ohio players usually are when you find them. So, to find this is uh, really nice. Alright, to get on to what really floated my boat, so to speak, today. If you know from a previous uh, Record Store Day, Black Friday, I've been diving deeper into jazz. And, of course... If you're diving deeper into jazz, I discovered jazz through Donald Byrd, and I'm working on his catalog, and of course, John Coltrane and Miles Davis, you know, uh, fills in, and then you discover people like Lou Donaldson, you know, over my shoulder here, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm ever filling in my Miles Davis collection. So this is something from a previous record store day. So you already know what I'm on the lookout for and what one of my tastes is. So I'm just kind of segueing that faux OB strip, uh, Miles in Tokyo, as a preference. Well, at Pharmacy Records... He's got a buddy of his is clearing out. It must be a massive record collection. So they got a deal worked out where it's pretty, basically I think they're consigning it. So there's no room to haggle, but they're priced fairly. Excuse me. And um, so he brings in like a lot of like 15 to 30 records at a time. And they usually disappear really quick, but they're all Japanese press. I've got a, a few of them like this in the past. So they're always double bagged stored in the back all the bells and whistles so another lot of these came in right around record store day so this dude brought in a box of heavy hitters and it hurt me to leave things behind i might not end up at other stores in greenville usually if you check out like last year i hit up all three record stores for uh last record store day maybe i'll leave a link if i'm smart or or i uh, have the memory to do so in the uh, description but um, I left behind Almond Brothers Band, and I want to say there was Led Zeppelin, a couple different Led Zeppelins, and luckily some of this Miles Davis I'm about to get into is Miles I already own, so it's easier to pass on. But these are just phenomenal condition. Like I say, a lot of these are still in the shrink. This one's still in the shrink. This OB strip is one of the horizontal strips. Still sealed in the shrink. And like I say, it is in the shrink, in a wrap, in a wrap record protected in the back uh if you do store I, I tend to not store records like this but if you are going to do it these are like two four mil four mil uh, outer sleeves super heavy uh protective but i don't need to go out of my way to show how nice all these are i think this guy might have been more of a collector than an actual player because these are all fantastic so this is old cbs sony pressing right here uh absolutely amazing condition so more of the same, and I'm not going to, people are going to know Miles better than I am, so I'm not going to have to dive into all these records because this video could become terribly long. I bought uh, a bunch of these. So here's another one, once again, with the horizontal OB in the shrink with the original hype sticker. If you can see that, in fact, I was still good googly moogly. Like I said, this dude, double protection, trying to give you a better, a better gander, so to speak. So just tremendously clean they still have the original um c cup uh japanese style inner sleeves and like i say all these have whatever inserts they would originally came with they're still all intact everything's there just absolutely pristine uh pricey but also priced fair so that was pleasing another good one once again this one also in the shrink horizontal obi and the original hype sticker um, really clean. Um, everyone goes bonkers for the um, the six eyes and the old two eyes, rightfully so. But I think these uh, 360 um, Columbia uh, Circle logos play fantastically. 
So, uh, really pleased. This is one of the Miles Davis that's been on my radar that I am more familiar with that I've streamed. So this was on uh, something I was on the hunt for already. And then this is Prestige Miles Davis. Another one just beautiful, uh, encapsulated. This one is not in the shrink, which is fine. Actually, if you guys know, some Japanese uh, pressings never even came in the shrink to begin with. But still has the obi. And if you see here, that iconic old um, black and yellow prestige label. So more Miles Davis here. And the last two, I think, is this still... This, we're into the Phillips catalog. Um, this absolutely presents beautiful, uh, gorgeous. The Phillips logo right there. Once again, all the bells and whistles. Uh, maybe I'll show these in a uh, feature of jazz. I have more jazz finds. I've just been um, beating around the bush and having um, showed half of what I bought as of late. And then this is one I'm really pleased with. There's another store around town. I've been familiar with this uh, for some time and listened to it and been waiting for a copy. I found Beaters and I'm kind of on a mission for that condition. But uh, if I find something that's just been eluding me, uh, like some of this old dust and some of this uh, more weird stuff that I've been, I've been looking for and it just eludes me, has a little scratches and it's heavier, I don't mind. But a jazz and classical, uh, softer music, some of that stuff, uh, some prog that has soft and quiet spots to build up, if there's scratches, and damaging those um i'm just not with that so i've passed on some little bit later represses they're just kind of beat up and there's og in town uh first u.s press that's kind of messed up it's overpriced and i just i couldn't work out a deal and so i just let it go and it kind of bothered me and then not much later i found this japanese pressing in the shrink with the hype and it's just once again um i i I don't know if I'm exaggerating here, but these are unplayed condition. I've been guilty of it in the past, too, or just lost my train of thought uh, when I'm trying to describe stuff and whatever. You know, people throw around the term uh, mint uh, too easily. And true dead mint, honestly, should be sealed, This, you know, unopened. But this doesn't have a ding, a ping, a scratch, a scuff. Uh, this whole Miles Davis lot, and I left two or three behind and it kind of hurt me but the price tag was getting up there so it just is what it is i might not be in any other stores today or maybe for the rest of the month and beyond uh but uh anyways uh thanks for hanging out for a spell uh maybe i'll leave uh links to some of the things i babble about if i recall i don't know if this video will hit editing or not or maybe i'll just post it who knows either way take care be well rock on